Hi, my name's Starsky and welcome to From the Studio on Clubbing TV. Recently, Behringer have been releasing loads of miniature clones of famous classic vintage synths, but are they any good? So today, I'm going to put their Pro 1 up against the vintage sequential circuits Pro 1, which it's based on. So that's what I've reproduced using these. I've got a much more in-depth and technical comparison of these two on my Starsky Car YouTube channel, listening to sort of each synth individually into every single nuance of every single function. But that's not what you buy a synth for, you buy it to make music. So I thought today it'd be interesting to see how these sound in a track. The idea here being to create a track using the vintage unit and then recreate on the Behringer and see how they stack up against each other. And just quickly show you what I've got here. I've used this MIDI to CV converter by TA Programming, so I can play exactly the same notes on both machines, especially when I'm recreating fast arpeggios, so that the only difference is the sound, not what I'm playing. And I've used this so I can put the same effect on both synths rather than plugging and unplugging my effects pedals. It's a Korg Soundlink desk, and I'm using it on board digital effects here. I've got a delay, let's just have a listen to that on this. It's a Pro One. And that's the Behringer. And as I say, I just don't have to unplug stuff to do that. And I've set them up sounding pretty similar already, so I've got a nice starting point and I know the levels are about right. It's actually taken quite a while to set this up to get it all working properly, so hope you appreciate my efforts. But before we get into the synths, let's start with the foundations of the track and take a quick look at what I used to create the beat. And here I've used Wave Alchemy Evolution software. I think I've showed this in previous episodes, but it's got a huge range of basic samples, all laid out really simply and by genre. We've got house, techno, etc., etc. And which one did I use here? Chuggerific. This is the. This was my starting point. So it's got an inbuilt sequence, so we can see down here. So the kicks on the beats. So for each drum, we've got different types. So for kick, we've got 808 types. All these different samples down here. Just have a listen to a few. And classic. And as I say, you've got transient layers on top of each of those. So we've got, what have we got on the transient here? So all sorts of different transients and different layers as well that you can put on the top. And we've got loads of control over the samples, changing the volume, envelopes and pitch. And then we can add effects like reverb and delay. You've got channel effects like equalizer, compressor, and the shaper, which has got crushes and drives, let's... All sorts of different things there. But I've changed the kick and taken out the glitchy bit, and then added the Vertigo VSM3 from Plugin Alliance, which adds a nice bit of distortion, and then stuck it through this compressor, just to dirty it all up a bit. And this is the final beat, which I think works for what I'm going for. So that's the beat sorted, let's move over to the synths and create a bass line. I think we'll start off with something simple and then layer a more complex tone over the top. Very similar. But I'm not going to get everything precisely, absolutely spot on. It's just going to take too long. It's the same feel, so let's put that in the track. Just something really simple. And let's add something with a little bit more harmonic content over the top of that. That's nice and hollow. Let's add something a bit more gritty and bouncy.
That sounds lovely, let's put that in. And again, let's repeat that on the Behringer. I think it's sounding tough and it leaves enough space for a lead line and arpeggio as well. So let's move on to the arpeggio. The arpeggio we'll use to bring in some movement and dynamics, which we can bring in as the track builds. So we don't want anything too big, just a little sort of 16th, almost like a hi-hat ticking over the top. So we'll make something sort of high-pitched and snappy and pretty simple. Getting there. That's the sort of thing we're after. Let's try and do it over here as well. Just copy what I've done. Let's see how close it gets. Not bad. Well, I think that's the sort of thing I'm after. Let's create a really simple pattern now to put over the top. This part's about the rhythmic feel, so I don't want anything too complex. All sounding very nice, a fun afternoon on the table. So I think these are sounding pretty similar so far. It's not really easy to do this you know it does take a bit of tweaking and the the knobs aren't in the same positions and if you had two of these for example it'd be difficult enough to match them up i think i suspect if you had two of brand new ones of these it'd still be a bit difficult but comparing the two synths together i'm really impressed i think they're sounding really similar here i want something a bit sparse but musical to sort of counter out that sort of chunky banging beat that's going on. So I'm gonna make something light and I'm gonna bounce a simple line around using some, some delay to keep the rhythm moving without cluttering things up. Now let's try and replicate that over here. Sounding, sounding pretty good, not sounding identical. It's pretty difficult to get everything matching, but yeah, I'm really, really impressed by this. And let's just add a few sort of one-offs and effects and sort of sweeps and things to introduce new sections and bring in the breaks and stuff like that. We'll start off with some sort of metallic clangs and bangs, because as well as sounding great, they'll show us how the FM works from one to the other, because this is something that's really difficult to get equal between two different synths. So we'll modulate oscillator A with oscillator B, so turn oscillator B modulation amount up, uh, put it on direct, and change oscillator A to direct. So to me, they're really, really spot on. They might not sound absolutely identical, but it's so difficult to get FM tones sounding exactly the same on two even identical synths, just because the interaction between the two oscillators when you're modulating one with the other is just so fine. So this, to all intents and purposes, that's absolutely blob on. And I'm quite surprised how close I can get that. Anyway, let's throw that in, add a load of reverb and add some sort of clangs into the mix. OK, 
okay, I think that about covers it. Got the Behringer up on the top in orange, got all the parts recorded for that. And at the bottom, we've got the sequential in blue. Everything's recorded, I've thrown in some effects. So I think it's time to put it all together and switch between the two. So I think they're pretty damn close, aren't they? And what are my final thoughts on this? I know Behringer gets some stick for these recreations that they've been making, but I have to say they are amazing value for what they offer. The vintage synth unit here will cost me about 1,400 pounds, 1,600 euros on eBay. And your Behringer Pro One's around 300 euros, but you can pick them up second hand for 250 or a little bit less. And of course, this has got MIDI as well. It's got the five pin DIN standard, and it's also got a USB as well, which the Pro One doesn't have. But most importantly, it sounds fantastic. So for me, this is a definite yay. Although, just to throw a swerve ball into the mix, I've done exactly the same with Yuhi's excellent Repro. Reproduced all the parts using the Repro One, which is the emulation of the Pro One. So let's have a listen to how that stacks up as well, shall we? something else to consider if you're not into your hardware or the Behringer's out of your reach or you're just more into soft synths which of course um, have patch memories that are 100% recallable, um, have built-in effects and can be automated and you can run as many instances as your computer can handle. So in short, in short uh, the soft synths are much easier, quicker and cheaper to use. Recreating it on the computer with the Yuhi was a lot, lot quicker than doing it on either of these. So um, yeah, it's quicker, it's cheaper, but nobler. But it's nice to have the choice. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and don't forget you can catch all the episodes whenever you like on our Clubbing TV official YouTube channel. Just look for the From the Studio playlist. And I'll see you in the next episode of From the Studio.